Kim from the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences. I'll cover the topic of cirrhotic patient and the promise of preventive uses of albumin in Asia. I have nothing to disclose. Patients who have got, and I'm only restricting to Asia, I'm not covering the albumin functions, which are covered very well. Modifications in the structure and function, no. I will basically con uh, converge my topic on preventive uses of albumin therapy in uh, Asia, especially in refractory shock or hypertension and dysfunctional and toxic albumin in Asia, PICD in ACNF. In a patient with cirrhosis, there is a loss of hepatocytes, synthesis is reduced, functionality is reduced, therefore we replenish albumin. However, in patients who have got uh, jaundice and hepatocyte cell death, there is accumulation of cell debris, the albumin gets modified, and there is an altered albuminone. And therefore, sometimes there is a need to replace albumin. I'm not going into the controversy, but yes, there are situations, and I'll show you, where albumin is dysfunctional and is not worthy of being used. In a patient with cirrhosis, you will see that abdomen has more of blood volume, splanchnic circulation has much more blood volume than a healthy, normal person. Cirrhotics therefore differ because of a high cardiac output, low blood pressure, increased plasma volume, decreased red cells, more so in child C patients. The circulation is hyperdynamic and functionally, however, patient is hypervolume. There is a high sympathetic drive and there is limited vasoconstriction due to uh, drugs. And there is increased vascular compliance and less is in the central blood wall. In a cirrhotic, there is a therefore increased heart rate and cardiac output, contractility is low, and patients with portal hypertension especially have a low systemic vascular resistance. If there is infection, sepsis, these patients have much rapid decrease in their blood pressure. So our aim is that we give an early goal-directed therapy and within three hours try to maintain their mean arterial pressure and improve the lactate clearance. This is not known what is the best drug. Our objective is therefore to increase the MAP, sustain the MAP, and reduce the lactate. Crystalloids, we have shown in an earlier study, are better than colloids, are useful to improve uh, the hypertension in about 12% of the patients. But which of these is the better between crystalloid and colloid? There is one study, which I will come to it. How are these two agents, colloids and crystalloids work? The colloids basically try and are retained in the vessels. They have antioxidant properties, they decrease the migration and increase the transcapillary flow. They fill up the space between the glycocalyx by stabilizing the glycocalyx. So the space in the glycocalyx is reduced, leakage is reduced, and microvasculature is protected. On the other hand, the crystalloids like saline and others, although they are easily available and low cost, but they have a huge extravasation and also the leakage from the vessels cannot be stopped. And also they can cause hyperchloremic acidosis. We have shown earlier, as I said, the saline itself can reverse hypertension in about 12%. We have used 5% albumin and subsequently 20% albumin. So this is called the fluid resuscitation in sepsis and cirrhosis protocol, the FRISC protocol, where we screen patients and cirrhosis with sepsis and hypertension were 358. A large number were excluded. And finally, we had 154 patients who received saline and another 154 received human alcohol. And we assessed MAP, lactate, and urine at various time points with endpoint being at three hours. 
As you will notice, the blue is light, uh, blue is saline, and the dark blue is albumin. At one hour, the mean arterial pressure was much better in albumin compared to the saline, and this was sustained for three hours. Also, the inotope requirement was lower in those who received 5% albumin. The lactate clearance was superior and 5% albumin was given. Delta lactate was also better and the lactate clearance also was better. At one week, the mortality in the albumin versus saline group was significantly different. 6.2 days was survival in the albumin, while 4.9 days in the saline in patients with hypotension. Therefore, we concluded that the 5% albumin solution reverses sepsis-induced hypotension better than 0.9% saline, maintains the pressure of about 12%, but it also shows the huge gap and need for vasopressors early enough. Albumin also improved the heart rate, reduced lactate, and short-term survival of up to seven days, then saline. I will now go on to the few more trials in Asia on dysfunctional and toxic albumin, which is seen in ACLF, and whether we replace or replenish. Acute on chronic liver failure, has an acute insult which could be continued alcohol, happy reactivation, viral hepatitis, or autoimmune flare, or drug induced liver injury, on an underlying chronic liver disease or cirrhosis of the liver, leading to development of jaundice above 5, coagulopathy of INR more than 1.5, and acute portal hypertension in the form of ascites and hepatic encephalopathy. First, what happens in acute on chronic liver failure when the bilirubin is more than five? Normally, one molecule of serum albumin binds with one molecule of bilirubin. However, when there is a hyperbilirubinemia, one molecule of albumin binds with three molecules of bilirubin, giving it a non-functional status. There is nothing left for copper, iron, and others to bind. This hyperbilirubination of serum albumin in ACLF causes the normally inactive albumin to become active. It becomes elliptical. And if the ellipticity is more than 1.84, these patients may have a higher mortality. As you can see here, that patients who have an ellipticity of more than 1.84 have a poor survival. In severe alcoholic hepatitis, albumin becomes pathological. There are three forms. One is human mercap albumin called HMA, but then there is human non mercap albumin where 1634 is reversibly oxidized and HNA2 where it is irreversibly oxidized. So there is nothing on 1634 for uh, absorbing the reactive oxygen species. So in alcoholic hepatitis, the pathological albumin is much more, and it works on neutrophils, causes burst, cytokines are released, and more inflammatory damage occurs. So this cycle continues because of pathological albumin. Therefore, again, the question comes whether we should replenish or replace the albumin in jaundiced cirrhosis patients or in ACLF patients. Another example of pathological albumin is seen in severe alcoholic hepatitis by its action on platelets. As I showed you, HNA1 or HNA2, they work on the CD36 receptor of the platelets. And this oxidized reversibly or irreversibly A1 or A2 will lead to activation of the CD36 receptor and this leads to a dysregulated granule release from the platelets, release of inflammatory cytokines, and this is an inflammatory type phenotype of platelet. So I showed you the data on neutrophils, 
I showed you the data on platelets. Both can become pathological and this can lead to more inflammation and thrombotic events. However, all said and done, there is very limited success with albumin dialysis. So we need to see how much albumin to be given, how safe it is, how it is degraded, how it is modified in patients of ACL. Huge area of work. I will now briefly discuss about PICD in ACL. If all of you are aware about PICD in cirrhosis, where an increase in plasma renin activity to 50% of the pretreatment value or to become greater than four nanogram per ml per hour. It is associated because of lack of effective blood volume. We have removed six liters. So the effective blood volume decreases. Then therefore there is hyponatremia, HE and acute, on, acute, kid, on chronic, acute kidney injury. Therefore we require plasma expanders like albumin with or without vasoconstrictors when LVP is done. LVP is more than six liters, five liters. The gap in knowledge is about patients with acute on chronic liver failure, which have acute portal hypertension. And I'll show you that these patients have a huge neurohormonal derangement. There is inflammation, much more nitric oxide and cytokines. Cardiac inotropic functions are deranged due to bilicardia. There is hypotension. Oxygen delivery is reduced. Market decrease in SVR and intrahepatic resistance increases. So there is a circulatory dysfunction with a sympathetic overdrive. And this leads to a very high rise in portal pressure and development of ascites. Our hypothesis was a hemodynamic change and there is much more in patients with ACLF and PICD could therefore develop at a lower volume of paracentesis, less than five liters. And we thought albumin infusion, which is not recommended for less than five liters, might be helpful in PICD in ACLF patients. We aim to study the incidence of PICD in ACLF undergoing modest volume paracentesis with or without plasma expansion using 20% albumin. Our primary aim was incidence or development of PICD and then effect of uh, albumin and survival benefits and adverse events. Uh, a total of uh, 144 patients who had grade two or three ascites after inclusion and exclusion criteria, 40 received 20% albumin and other 40% uh, other 40 did not receive any albumin. These patients were sick. They had a high portal pressure. HVPG was 20 or so. They have systemic vascular resistance, which is low. They had a high MELD score, both with or without albumin. After tapping, we had a group which received albumin and the other who, which did not. And heart rate, which is seen up to day six, you can see that there was an advantage with albumin. As far as systolic blood pressure was concerned, there was initially an advantage, but not at the end of six days. The diastolic blood pressure, however, was maintained with uh, albumin group. Also, plasma renin activity. Now, I want to show you that earlier I said four, but here in these patients who have got uh, ACLF, plasma renin at baseline is around 20. And it increased to 35 or so and no albumin compared to when albumin was given. The difference was significant. And at 7 and 28 days survival, as you can see, was significantly better in those who received albumin compared to those who did not receive albumin. The incidence of complications after modest volume paracentesis, this is albumin group, hyponatremia was less, hepatic encephalopathy was less, and acute kidney injury was less. A plasma renin activity, which is higher than 23, 
as you can see, was significant to predict reliably PICD and the recovery subsequently. To summarize, therefore, paracentesis induced circulatory dysfunction PICD is more common and severe in ACLF. Therefore, do not do LVP. Only do modest volume paracentesis of three to four liters. Albumin reduces the incidence of PICD and improves 28 day survival from 30% to 69%. This was the work of Dr. Aurora. Our last, my last slide is our new initiative about new avenues for albumin therapy in Asia called the Asia Trial. Efficacy of albumin therapy with standard medical treatment as compared to standard medical treatment in improving patient survival and immune modulation in patients with ACLF, the Asia trial. Out of 200 patients, I think nearly 190 have been enrolled. And our aim of restoration of immune homeostasis in ACLF with albumin therapy is to be explored and seen. With this, I thank you all for attending this session. Albumin is, a, is an area for investment in research and new thinking in hepatology. Thank you.